uh, I'm going to ask uh, Council Vice President Glidden to take the chair, and I'm I'm going to make some remarks, and it's going to be. Unfortunately, I woke up about 4:30 in the morning, so I've had some time to think about this, and I and I really want to explain myself and, and my position on this. Thank you, Madam Council Chair. Council President Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I really have thought uh, uh, very carefully about this, uh, uh, the concerns that have been raised about getting people into the criminal justice system uh, and what uh, challenges that provides uh, for them for the rest of their, their lives. Um, and I, and I want to acknowledge, uh, thank you, Councilmember Yang, for having this in, uh, for two cycles in public safety. Um, I listened to both uh, public hearings. Um, I was unable to attend one, and I had to leave early on the other one, but I did listen to both. Um, I also looked through uh, the, the uh, lurking arrests that were made um, in uh, Minneapolis, the police reports that are available to the public. And I found that in 2014, um, in North Minneapolis, there actually were only three arrests for lurking. Two were in my ward, one was in Councilmember Yang's ward. <clears throat> and as I said uh, in the Public Safety Committee meeting, I thought uh, reading through the police reports that um, um, this issue of intent, uh, which seems so uh, unclear to people, although intent uh, is um, decided all the time, um, uh, was pretty clear in the in the two that happened in my ward, uh, including somebody uh, hanging outside of a garage um, that has an underground uh, entrance, um, hiding in the bushes uh, with a mask on his face, and um, um, it was the middle of summer. So. Uh, a challenge. Um, the other one was someone who, uh, during the winter, um, uh, walked up to a business uh, in my ward uh, in the middle of the night, um, uh, was looking in the picture window, tried the front door, uh, and then left uh, the yard. So, you know, I felt like the police had uh, had very um, uh, concrete reasons to uh, charge these people with lurking. It's a tool, again, that isn't used very often. It was recently used in, in um, North Minneapolis to um, charge uh, a set of uh, people with burglary uh, after, uh, in one night, uh, seven garages were burgled um, in um, uh, a two-block radius. So uh, I, I, I am concerned about uh, taking this um, uh, tool off the table. Um, I want to acknowledge the people too that have contacted me uh, both um, to support my position and then also criticizing my position. I appreciate anybody that uh, takes the time to uh, write, uh, email, call, uh, and um, uh, tell me what they think. Um, I've had some really good conversations with constituents of mine, particularly the most valuable conversations that I've had are constituents of color that I've known for years and years and years that have called me with concerns about not lurking, but treatment of people uh, in uh, with police contacts. And I found that actually listening to the public hearing too, that it was more about uh, that people's uh, concerns are more about um, their everyday uh, encounters with the police department and how um, they feel like they're uh, singled out um, uh, for added scrutiny, for um, talk uh, to the police officer uh, when they're people of color. And this is an issue that we absolutely have to address uh, in our city. And I, um, I think that our police department um, is on the right track. Uh, I think we as council members, our, uh, Council Member Gordon, I'm glad you reminded me about my, the charge and the, and, the, and the bond and the pact that we have with citizens. Uh, about uh, uh, representing people, because I think it is important in my mind uh, to remember the people that I represent. And I do represent people who are very challenged uh, with crime. I just saw a statistic um, the other day that uh, North Minneapolis has twice the level of violent crime uh, as the rest of the city of Minneapolis. So my citizens, when they're contacting me, are concerned about uh, people uh, in their alleys, um, people are, are sometimes carjacked out of alleys uh, in, in our neighborhoods. Um, people are concerned about their property. I have every week get emails from people who routinely, if they leave their car in their driveway, they come out in the morning and their car has been gone through. The joke of it is everybody always says, and they didn't take my CDs, ha, 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 because the music tastes are different. So, you know, um, 
this is something that is concerning of people. They also, they also leave their windows open. They also leave their windows open, excuse me, their car unlocked so that people don't break their windows. So uh, it is a concern. I'm repeating what my constituents have, uh, have told me. But I want to say all of us deserve um, respectful treatment from our police department. I've represented the city in many, many uh, conferences, many uh, circumstances where the actions of our police department have been challenged. And all of us know that we have over a million contacts every year between citizens and our police department. And some of them will be under unpleasant circumstances. Most of them are under unpleasant circumstances. When somebody calls the police, they have an emergent situation. It's a challenge. So it's up to us, city council, to provide the training that are for our police to assist them in unbiased police work, to support citizens' right to report and offer assistance to redress bad police conduct and to support the chief when she, when she disciplines officers. And this work is being done. I really am concerned, however, that this is, this, uh, is a first step, this uh, repealing of this lurking and spitting. And as, as I listen to the discussion and I listen to the press conferences, it's clear this is first step. And so, uh, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering if I could ask uh, Councilmember Gordon a question. Um, Council President, mm -hmm. we typically do not allow back and forth between colleagues. I think if you want to make a point, I would I would offer to do that. Well, all right. I'm just going to point out that this is um, um, uh, clearly step one. And I'm just curious as to what other ordinances people want to uh, dismantle. I'm reading in the, in the press um, that there are other ideas. And I think the public would like to know uh, exactly what uh, what people are proposing. Um, I think that it's a uh, if we do go down it, when we go down this path because it's clear we're going to go down this path. Um, you know what's the next step? Is it um, is it disorderly conduct? That's one of the things that I've uh, heard mentioned. Uh, is it curfew? Um, I hope that if we do do these things that are are perhaps a more common. Uh, charge that is or arrest that is made in this city that we involve more people uh, than this this and I, I thank you all for being here but we have 380,000 people that live in this city and so I want to hear their voices too um, and we will and we will please let's let's just have uh, some order as we finish our comments thank you everyone As I wrote in the Star Tribune, livability or low-level crimes hurt real people. If you can't get to work because your car is damaged, you might think that the person who did this should be punished. If you're unable to sleep when you have to go to work the next day because young people are being loud in your alley, you might, you might think curfews make sense. If you get in an accident uh, with an unlicensed or uninsured driver, you might be angry that you'll have to pay more on your deductible and your insurance costs will go up. If you watch people fighting with each other on the public transit, you may make the decision not to use public transportation anymore. So I just want to say those are the kind of things that these low-level crimes that we're talking about, those are the, those are the charges that people use um, to try and deal with some of these issues that in a civilized society, in challenged neighborhoods, are things that people want to see dealt with. So again, I think this is the first step. I want to encourage people, though I, I have to say this, I want to encourage people to please tone down uh, the rhetoric around um, uh, this issue. I think it is really unhelpful to talk about Minneapolis being the next, potentially being the next Ferguson. It's irresponsible, it's uh, inflammatory, uh, and uh, that is really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. So I, I just want to say I won't accept that kind of discussion. It's not appropriate in, uh, in a civilized city. So thank you. And um, I just really appreciate the chance to speak my mind on this issue. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I will, I'll go ahead and, and ask. I, I don't see any more comments. And I'll ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. 
Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 13 Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm, I voted <laughs> Let's, can we please, can we please finalize our vote, please? Thank you. There are 12 eyes. There are 12 eyes and one nay. Okay. And I am returning the chair Thank to you. Council President Johnson. Thank you. Thank you.